That'll be $10. Would you like to leave a tip? Oh no, here it comes. The tip menu. I don't know what to put. I mean, they, they just made my drink. They're doing their job, but they didn't serve me, right? I mean, I want a tip, but I don't think this is right. This is corporate America coming after me. This, this ain't fair, man. Starbucks makes like a billion dollars a year and they should be tipping me. Have you even seen the last inflation report? <laughs> and now they're staring at me. They, they know I don't want a tip, but, but now the people behind me can see what I'm doing. <laughs> the system was designed to work this way, wasn't it? <laughs> Fine, 25. Next. What? They, they didn't even say thank you for the tip? Man, I'm not tipping next time. That'll be $100 for your overpriced hoodie. Would you like to leave a tip? Not this time, Pilgrim. You can't win. Duh, wh why are you holding the device like that? This is too personal. This feels like an interrogation. Why, why are these numbers so high? Is this right? This is social pressure. <sighs> Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm for the accuracy of that skit. But before you do, would you like to add a tip with that? Jokes aside, a tipping is a huge part of the culture here in the US, and it's really important to tip well, especially for good service at restaurants, to tip lower wage service workers, deliveries, barbers, magicians, even when they're producing $100 bills, because we're cool, but also neglected. I'm just kidding, but not really. Unfortunately, the US tipping culture is completely broken. When was the last time you purchased something and you weren't asked for a tip? Literally never. Please continue. Tipping culture has gotten out of control. I get up to the pay window and she's like, how much do you want to tip? What am I going to tip you for? I'm in the drive through Oh my God. Tips have been on the rise for decades. During the 1950s, people commonly tipped 10% of the bill. By the 1970s and 1980s, that jumped to 15%. Today, people tip anywhere from 15 to 25%. Some people argue that even a 20% tip, something that was once considered really good, is now just the standard. 20%, wow, it's obvious you've never worked in the service industry. I always tip at least 60 because I care whether or not our waitress starves to death. Nowadays, there are people who argue 20% is kind of a cheap tip. While the percentage that consumers are tipping at full-service restaurants in the past couple of years has remained about the same, in the fourth quarter of 2022, the number of tips provided at full-service restaurants grew 17%. Meanwhile, the tip frequency at quick-service restaurants such as coffee shops and fast food chains rose 16% during the same time period. Things have gotten so out of control in this country about tipping that we have to talk about it, so let's get into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for just the tip. Did you know that the word TIP is actually an acronym which stands for to ensure promptness? Now, if you knew that, I bet what you didn't know is that that's actually an urban myth. That's not at all where the word comes from. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the word TIP was a slang word used by criminals roughly 400 years ago. And the original word meant to give or share with. Like for example, have you ever split the bill with your friends? I mean that literally, not split the check, but split the bill, like this $2 bill into two ones, just like that. Just me? Okay, but uh, wanted to uh, tip you this magic trick. Anyway, that's the origins of the word, but tipping as a culture didn't actually start until about the 1860s here in the US. That's when rich Americans brought the practice over back from Europe. Now, in 1938, the federal minimum wage law was created, but tipped workers were not included. And that's around the time when the problem started to happen, because in 1966, Congress created something called the tip credit, which allowed restaurants to pay their employees below the minimum wage. In 1991, the federal minimum wage for tipped employees was only $2.13, and in 1996, Congress permanently froze that sub-minimum wage at $2.13 an hour, and that's where it still is to this day. True story, the US is the only country in the world that does not pay their tipped employees a full minimum wage. In fact, 43 out of 50 states here in the US allow that to happen. And that brings us to the present time and tipflation. You're faced with sort of that awkward question, should we tip even after having little or even no interaction with an employee? We don't have the tip jar anymore. You've got that swiveling touch screen that goes right in front of you in places we don't expect. What's the etiquette? Nowadays, everywhere we go and everywhere we shop, there's a little tablet that's presented to us that asks if we'd like to leave a tip and America's now confused. 
what should we actually leave a tip for? Because if you type into Google, do you tip for, you'll see a hilarious amount of options like tipping for Botox. Should you? I don't know, I'm getting wrinkles on my forehead now, but I guess that's the perks of being 48. Would you do it if you were me? I don't know, but in some cases, we'll be asked to leave a tip even when there's not a person there. It's just self-service. In some cases, we'll be asked to leave not just a percent tip, but an exact dollar amount. And in other cases, the tip will be included, but it's also gonna be hidden. True story, I remember going to a sushi dinner with a group of friends here in Las Vegas, and a gratuity was automatically included in the bill, but we didn't see it. So we tipped another 25 to 30%. So over half of our bill was completely tipped. So the question is, how did things get this bad? In recent years, you might have found yourself asking, do I tip this barista for pouring that hot coffee? What about when I'm going to a restaurant and picking up takeout? And how much do I tip that doorman, driver, or dog walker? And this is really where the problem started recently, because when the pandemic happened, a lot of restaurants started to close down. So Americans started to tip for a lot of other things they otherwise would have never tipped for to help support their local businesses from being shut down. Before the pandemic, for example, roughly 46% of people tipped when ordering remotely. But after the pandemic, that number jumped up to 86% of people. During the pandemic, businesses who lost a lot of traditional customers and transactions were looking for alternative ways to make up that income. And if asking for tips was one way to do it, they were willing to try it. And that's why since then, the problem has started to get worse because what was once eight to 10% and then 10 to 15%, which eventually turned to 15 to 20% is now no longer enough. I have not yet been to the restaurant where they recommend five, 10 or 15% for quick takeout. It normally always starts at 15 as a bare minimum, sometimes even starting at 20, 25 and up to 30. Now, arguably one of the biggest problems with the tipping culture today is what a tip is supposed to represent because ideally, the better the service, the better the tip for the worker is. But it turns out that's not always necessarily true. If I give better service, I get a bigger tip. Actually, you don't. A study at Cornell University found that the real reasons people tip more or less are basically random and that customers who receive great service tip on average just 1% more than customers who don't. Studies show that there's roughly a 1% difference in the tip size so for the side of service, it doesn't really make much of a difference whether it's good or bad, the tip is kind of random. Now on the side of consumers, a tip is something to be done to reward good service, not something to be done before service. Otherwise, it feels like a bribe or something we do not out of gratitude, which is what a gratuity is, but something that we do out of fear of bad service, which sort of defeats the whole purpose. According to a 2022 creditcards.com survey, 22% of respondents said when they're presented with various suggested tip amounts, they feel pressured to tip more than they normally would. They use those options as an indication of kind of what the normative range is and feel compelled to tip within that range. So the more you ask, the more you get. And that brings us to the tipping point. With sky high inflation and lower wage growth, all combined with virtually every company in the world looking to make a tip outside of the food industry, and you get a perfect storm where the people that truly need to live off tips are the ones that are suffering the most. A 2022 study found that 17% of Americans are tipping less because of inflation. However, 10% report tipping more. At the same time, more than half of Americans or 60% want to do away with tipping entirely. The extent of pandemic influence generosity has also gone down. 43% of consumers typically tipped servers 20% or more in 2022, compared to 56% of consumers in 2021. Meanwhile, the average tip for full service restaurants has gone down only slightly during the same time period. According to Toast, 19.6% in the fourth quarter of 2022, compared to 19.8% in 2021. However, according to surveys conducted in those same years, Respondents said they're tipping higher percentages, 21.2% and 18.9% respectively. Right, so yes, people are tipping more across the board, but the problem is when multi-billion dollar corporations like Starbucks start accepting tips rather than pay their employees a livable wage, then you reach a tipping point and people get tip fatigue. So over time, they tip people less, which ultimately harms the ones who rely on it the most. So the question is, what can we do about it? 
As a millennial, here's what I do. Not really, I promise I don't do this, but this is really cool. It's a way to fold one single bill to make it seem as though it's actually twice the money that it is. So you get twice the bang for your buck. Not bad, here's the secret. You hold the bill hot dog style, and then the secret is this little slit in the middle. So what you do is you fold the bill once like this toward yourself, once away from yourself to create the triangle, and the idea is if you fold the bill along this slit, you get these two beautiful bills. That's the illusion, and that's the pro tip on tipping from a millennial. Jokes aside though, over the years, there have been a lot of proposed solutions for how to fix this problem. And the most common solution is to get rid of the sub-minimum wage and to force those businesses to pay their employees an actual livable wage by raising their prices. And that seems like the most logical solution to the problem, but believe it or not, there is no agreed upon consensus here in the US for what we should and shouldn't do. There are calls to end tipping culture, requiring businesses to pick up the full tab for their employees' pay. But many in the restaurant industry who rely on tips, including at Whitman's, think that would actually work against them. Would you vote to switch for the set salary no. or would you keep it the way it is? I'd now? keep it the way it is. Why? The good weeks can be really, really good. And even the bad weeks, I think, are still yeah. enough. So what's interesting is that not everyone in the service industry agreed on getting rid of tipping. Now, some restaurants tried to do this in favor of paying their employees higher wages, but a lot of them lost their best staff and most of them went back to the tipping model. Dirt candy serves a vegetarian menu and tipping is not an option. Instead, the pay for their workers like Jay Shelley starts at $28 an hour. And everyone who's sitting down, they know that we're not a tipping establishment. Um, and it just, it like lightens it a little bit. I will take the less money in a situation where I feel like the environment, it's a little bit less stressful. But there's a problem because that's easier said than done because of the perception of value. When restaurants were asked about this, they said that customers were very happy to pay $25 for a pizza, as long as the pizza showed that it was $20 and they paid $5 for the tip. But when they showed a $25 pizza on the menu, which included tips, customers felt like they were being taken advantage of and they were ripped off. And studies show that the restaurants that tried to do away with tips could not compete with the ones that kept the tips and they struggled to keep their best staff. And because their best staff weren't taking care of customers, they saw less customers as a result. And if you think about this from the waiter's perspective, it actually makes a lot of sense because if a tipped waiter could make $50 an hour at a restaurant, why would they leave to go somewhere else that pays half as much for the exact same work? So fixing the tipping culture here in the US seems pretty easy and straightforward from the consumer side. But from the business side, it's a lot more complicated than it seems. Now, personally, I have a lot of thoughts about tipping and minimum wage. On the minimum wage side, I've always found that concept to be extremely insulting. And not just the dollar amount, which right now is $7.25 an hour, which again is insulting and nowhere near enough a livable wage, but the idea itself, because think about it. Working a minimum wage job is the exact same as a business telling you, look, we'd love to pay you less, but uh, legally we can't. And so from the principal perspective, I would never do it again. And I say again, because I have worked a minimum wage job and I understand that it builds character, it builds experience, and not everyone has the option to not do it. But if you do, and if you can avoid it, 100% avoid it because you deserve a lot more money for your hard work. Now on the tipping culture side, I think most people would be more than happy to leave a generous tip. But most people also wanna feel happy and they wanna be thankful for someone providing a good service. That's why it's called a gratuity, rather than feel pressured by society into doing something they don't necessarily agree with. That's the ideal world. But we don't live in a perfect world and people need to make a living. But capitalism makes that really hard because wouldn't it be nice if restaurants could just charge us a little bit more for food and then provide a livable wage to their employees? Yes, that would be nice, but if restaurants did that, most of us wouldn't shop there. And again, that's because of capitalism, because those businesses would be competing against ones that show a much lower price for their food because they're not including tips. And even though we as consumers know exactly what the true price of that food is, we would still choose those restaurants over time because most of us would fall prey to the clever marketing. And if we look at it from the perspective of the staff, especially when it comes to high-end or fine dining, 
Where there are tips, employees will make so much more money rather than if we allowed those businesses to create a livable wage for them where they'll make nowhere near enough what they're making now. So yes, in the ideal world, it would be nice if consumers didn't have to subsidize businesses paying their employees a livable wage. And the rest of the world has already figured out how to do that. But in the meantime, we'll just have to tip our staff, be generous if and when we can, but also maybe not shame each other into paying more because that's ultimately not the problem. I think. I could also be wrong. In the meantime, I'd love to know your thoughts about this because it really is a lot more complicated than it seems, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks, links are down below, and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet linked down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon. Bye-bye.